everybody, welcome to Crazy Tech Lab. And today we've got a uh, fun video for you because we are continuing to do a little bit of thermal testing in one of my favorite cases of 2020, which is of course the NZXT H1 Mini ITX case, which is both here and here. And uh, what we're doing today is carrying out a, uh, a few more tests with a few more graphics cards inside this case because as we found in my original video uh, with the thermal testing inside this case, the RTX 3080 Founders Edition uh, basically had terrible thermals inside this case. So what we'll be looking at today is just whether or not there are some alternatives if you want a high-end gaming graphics card to use in the NZXT H1. And uh, to start with, we have the Zotac Ampedition Hollow Black uh, RTX 3070, which is in there right now. It's pretty much the biggest card I think that you can, that you can fit in this case. Um, even here, I had to uh, remove a couple of components to actually fit it in, but fit it does. And uh, its two large fans are basically sitting right up against the side panel, but they are free to move, which is great. So basically it's in there, you can power it and it works. So what I'll be doing is uh, running through the thermals of this, uh, of that card to see if it's any better than the Founders Edition of the RTX 3070, which we have here as well. So obviously both cards have an element of uh, a very, very different element of uh, thermal, thermal design with their coolers. The... Founders Edition obviously relying quite heavily on that flow-through fan here and uh, pretty much most of the air that's coming out of that uh, that flow-through fan is coming out of the, of the rear section and that rear section is still going to be partially blocked by the storage cage in the NZXT H1 which is the bane of its life at the moment uh, dealing with a lot of these cards with flow-through fans. So will be very interesting to see whether or not the Zotac card fares better than the Founders Edition and also we have another card to throw in the mix, which is the RTX 3060 Ti Founders Edition card as well. Again, we're dealing with a flow-through fan. Um, and uh, my hope is that the 3070, but probably more, the, more so the 3060, is a less power-hungry cooler running card, which may fare a little better in the, in the NZXT case. So obviously there are some other alternatives from the Red Camp and they are the RX 6000 series cards. So I will be testing the RX 6800 XT to see which uh, you should go for, whether it's an Nvidia or AMD bias here. Obviously AMD with the Founders Edition, uh, not Founders Edition, like the stock cooler that I've got here, pretty decent cooler to be fair. Um, certainly looks the part as well, easily uh, installable in the uh, NZXT H1. Uh, unlike the Zotac card here, which needed uh, plenty of wiggling to get in there. But the benefit of this cooler is that it exhausts air only out of the sides. So there is no vent on the uh, the end of the card here. There's no vent on the rear. There's no flow-through fan. So what you've got is basically the cooler exhausting air from the side, which is basically exactly what the NZXT H1 likes, because you've got a vent here for the air to be kind of blown out uh, through that through that side panel. Um, obviously not going to be great on this side because you've got the uh, the glass uh, side panel there, but we might see a slightly better thermals with the AMD cards in these cases than we do with the RTX series. So what I'll be doing is basically testing each card outside of the case to see what the thermals are like and uh, then putting it into the case and just seeing how badly or how well uh, the, the actual case deals with the thermals, how much of an increase we're dealing with here uh, when you put these high-end cards into the NZXT H1. So what's, what's left to do then? Well, not really, not a lot really, just to carry on with the testing, uh, get those numbers, and we can discuss everything at the end. For now though, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. It means a lot to, uh, to have your support and to subscribe. And uh, when you do subscribe, don't forget to turn on the notification icon using the, uh, the bell icon to make sure that you are aware when I upload new videos because they will be worth looking at. And of course, if you like this video, don't forget to chuck me a like. And you can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook too. So don't forget to check out those social links. Okay, so here we are with the Zotac Hollow Black uh, RTX 3070. And uh, as you can see, it just about fits in, but not without some problems. So this uh, card is obviously the uh, 3070. So I've fitted a uh, 3070, sorry, 30. Uh, RTX 3080 in here, so power supply is uh, is not a problem. There's more than enough uh, power coming from the power supply to deal with this graphics card. However, uh, there are a few things that you'll need to do if you want to fit uh, a large card uh, such as this or this exact card into this case. So first of all, I had to remove the PCI Express 
um, it riser cable here so you've got to remove uh, the two screws that are holding it either side and that will allow you to pop that off and halfway through installing it you'll have to uh, mount that again um, because you can't install uh, the card with that in place and similarly you can't then get it into into position once the card is uh, in the position here so you kind of need to do both things at once about halfway through installing it so uh, but it does fit as you can see just needs a bit of wiggle room um, and as you can see down there um, it's fully locked in place and uh, just moving it around this side uh, the other thing I had to do is uh, up the top here which is uh, just nudging the edge of the cooler. There's a like a lip on the cooler down there You just need to nudge that past some of the cables and then the card will sit nice and nice and level as you can see here Okay, so first up then we have the peak GPU boost frequencies and the frequencies will be affected by thermals and uh, what we're looking at here then is the difference between the NZXT H1 which is in purple the graphics card inside the case there and the peak GPU uh, boost frequency uh, with the graphics card inside the case and also the open test bench result which is in blue so we're not really looking at graphics card versus graphics card here what we're looking at are differences between the purple and the blue or turquoise um, results in the graphs. So starting with the RTX 3070 uh, Founders Edition, there's actually no difference between the, the two results, which is good news because it means that there's uh, no let up in performance, uh, given that the fact the card was uh, getting too hot or anything like that. And uh, the same was true with the RTX uh, 3060 Ti Founders Edition as well, a slightly higher frequency seen on that one, but again, the same result both inside and outside of the case. So the RTX 3070 amp hollow black, um, once again we see an identical result um, inside and outside the NZX TH1, so no real issues there. And um, finally, possibly the one card that I didn't expect to actually get a slightly higher boost frequency um, when it was on the open test bench was the Radeon RX 6800 XT. So clearly either AMD's algorithms are uh, slightly more temperature bound um, or the card is simply making the most of a uh, of its cooler surroundings um, adding another uh, what is that sort of 12 um, actually no 22 uh, megahertz to the peak boost frequency okay so we're looking at the peak temperature now then and uh, this was achieved by running back-to-back -back runs of the Metro Exodus benchmark at 4k with ray tracing enabled so the uh, benchmark lasts about sort of eight or eight or nine minutes so plenty long enough for the graphics cards to get up to temperature and uh, by far and away the best result here was the Zotac RTX 3070 amp hollow black which managed to knock 3 degrees C off the low temperature of all the other graphics cards um, which is saying something so that just goes to show that you just need a, a really big cooler with big fans to deal with the uh, temperatures that uh, or to deal with the airflow design inside the NZXT H1. Um, However, the other graphics cards perform pretty much the same, both on the uh, test bench and inside the NZXT H1. They all reached around a peak of 78 degrees. Um, now, given that the uh, the peak uh, frequencies that we saw, that kind of lends itself to the fact that the cards are quite happy, they're not running too fast, but obviously the fan speeds are going to increase to compensate. Now, the uh, one thing that was interesting for me here is that the Radeon RX 6800 XT really didn't perform as well as I thought it would. I thought that the fact that it's uh, it's not got that flow-through fan design problem that the uh, the two Founders Edition cards have that would mean that it would perform better, but in fact, it's pretty much the same. Now, I do have a couple of theories here. One is that it's dishing out half of its airflow towards the glass side panel of the NZX TH1, which is obviously not good. Uh, uh, the other half does blow air through the side panel. Um, it's not particularly close to it, but it does blow air through that side panel. So I thought that having 50% of the air actually blowing out towards that side panel would have been enough to see off the other two Founders Edition, the two Founders Edition cards. But that's really not the case here. It's performing exactly the same. And I think that one thing might be uh, coming into play here, which is the fact that the RX 6800 XT does not have a PCI bracket vent whereas the two Founders Edition, Edition cards do. So while there might be an element of uh, airflow recirculation here due to the design of the NZX TH1, I think enough warm air is finding its way out of the bottom of the case with the Founders, uh, Founders Edition cards to actually kind of 
circumvent some of the effect of the flow through van the flow through fan design uh, and that's not happening with the radeon card so the fact that all of the air from the radeon card is spilling into the case or going out through the side panel is maybe working towards its detriment here um, but again none of the cards here really performed uh, that terribly uh, but i think it's fairly clear that the uh, the best way forwards with the um, the NZX TH1 is to actually go with a partner card, um, something with you know the biggest cooler that you can fit into the case with the biggest fans, um, and that seems to be the way to keep the thermals in check and to deal with these new um, these new high end cards inside a relatively compact case. So. My uh, basically my advice really is just to go for the biggest, most powerful cooler that you can. Uh, whether you're going for uh, a Radeon card or the new RTX 3000 series, and uh, the dimensions, of course, you can just check out the um, the Zotac uh, RTX 3070 uh, amp hollow black and check the dimensions there. I will put a link to that in the description. You can check those dimensions because those are the dimensions that you should be working towards if you're looking to fit the biggest card you can inside the NZX TH1 because that is going to be the uh, basically the biggest card that you can that you can fit in here. I wouldn't be able to fit in anything that is longer or wider than this card. You're stretching the limits. You have to remove the PCI expansion bracket as it is and even then it's a real squeeze to get this card in. Um, and up the top you've got the uh, the limitations of the roof and you also have the limitations of the uh, the front panel cables as well or should, should I say the roof the roof panel cables um, and they basically prevent you fitting anything much larger in this case too so that's my advice for you if you're looking to buy a new graphics card for a brand new or existing NZXT H1 build. Um, I hope you found this video informative. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, turn on notifications and also like this video and I will catch you soon.